that ch- should be better. <laughs> oh, no, I had the audio off again. Oh, my God, that's three minutes that I've done it without the audio. I'm honestly. <laughs> oh, God. Well, you looked at the nice images anyway, didn't you? You had a nice chat while that was going on. Um what can I say? I mean, I'm in lockdown. I'm under stress and um, everything else. <laughs> well, it's not going to matter because we have some really exciting couple of things to show you today. Um, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes, though. Um, everyone's going to be saying there's no audio. I'm going to have to dump that out at the beginning now. Oh, what a pain in the backside. Sorry, guys. Oh, let me just see who's here anyway. So we've got Heath is saying hello. Hello, Heath. How are you? Long Rider says, um, what's that? All right, Osla, the, this waiting online crap better be worth it. I love it. Um, Greg said, hey, David, here for the early start. Where are you? And I was a fraction late. I was trying to get things organized. Um, a little surprised he bought the 35 GM. Well, I didn't. Um, Sony have sent them me. <laughs> But I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Um, it's a little surprise I bought the 35 GM. Looked unsuitable for video and autofocus with how heavy it breathes. Yeah, and I'll have to have a look at that, but uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, Matt, I have one on order too. It's fantastic for stills. I think he has it on loan from Sony along with the A1. That's certainly right. I haven't got the A7 uh, 4 yet. It's because um, I'm hoping to get the one with the new monitors, but they've sent me the A1 and the 35, which I'll open in a minute and ha- have a look because I haven't even looked at it yet. I wanted to wait for you guys. I promise I have not opened this box. Um, so it's just in a case. So I'm going to have a look with you guys. So I want to get my first impressions and looks uh, with all of you uh, this morning. Um I'm guessing if you're not constantly changing focus from macro distance to infinity, it's not really a problem. I know no sound. Everyone's going to be saying that. Hello, David. Hot day in Los Angeles today and back to mandatory mask. Oh, have you got masks again? Um, having a Miller Lite. Cheers. Turn on your mic, David. Yeah, I know. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. Hello, Kerry. Did you, been... did you? Yeah, I left the mic off. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're up there. Uh, Say hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, Kerry's brought me in my Milo because it's uh, winter time here, remember? It's only, what is it this morning? 10 degrees Celsius. Oh, freezing. We're in the heart of winter now. This will warm me up a little bit, a bit of chocolate. But you know what? It won't be long and I'll be back with the uh, beers with you guys and everything again. Uh, we don't stay in winter very long. Everyone's going crook about my... Um, uh, Audio not working. Langston's here as well. G'day, Langston. How you going, buddy? Um, Matt, they, he's talking to Greg, and they're talking about the 35 GM. The image test looks really impressive. I think the image results will be fantastic. Um, but I'm probably going to use it for a little bit of both. I'll just see. Uh, I'm just proud of myself for paying bills instead of buying the 60X Lite for the Sony A7 S3. Bills have to be done first, Langston. I totally agree with you. Alex said, hi there, Dave from San Antonio, Texas, just chilling with an ultra and ready for the weekend. Woohoo, that sounds great. Um, <laughs> I love that too. Matt said, I respect your self-control, Langston. <laughs> um, good day from Maryland. Axman's here. Hello from Southwest Florida. G'day, Rocco. How are you? Uh, he said, uh, turn on your mic. I oh, know. Bloody hopeless, aren't I? Oh, the sound is out again. You know, the thing is, the problem is, it's because I keep changing systems all the time and trying new things, and then I forget to leave one thing off. I should have looked down. I'm using Ecamm today. Uh, And that's one thing that I'm going to have to look at because um, I notice when we go to the news that the text is a little bit small. I might go back to using the iPad where I can have the text really big so you guys can read it easier. Um, So I'll look at that for next week's um, show. I love Langston said, there we go again, I oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now it's on. Roberto says, hi, Rob and Jerry from Australia. Uh, Olympus Shooter. Welcome, Roberto. Everyone is welcome in these chats, that's for sure. The video sequence had no had. Oh, that had audio, did it? Oh. Oh, I thought the that didn't have audio. Okay, well, that's fine then. Um your intro had video. Okay, cool. Well, that's good then. Um, it would 
Uh, it wouldn't be the same if everything works. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Uh, I think David's been making more mistakes since he uh, stopped drinking. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I probably do need the drinks. It probably relaxes me and I chill down a little bit. That's funny. Uh, clearly he needs beer to avoid technical issues. I see I got roasted on um, camera conspiracies thing the other day. Guy laughed when I watched it. <clears throat> he slammed me. <laughs> he slammed me for doing reviews of all the stuff that I get. Uh, if you haven't watched it, you should watch it, but he slammed me. Yeah, I got it. I copped it bad. Um uh, Emgris said, hello, David. Sony actually sending stuff along to you now. Now, it was Sony Pro Support, Langston, that sent it to me. So it's not Sony Australia. This came from Sony Pro Support. So it's uh, different. So, yeah. Uh, Sony Pro Support are amazing. They really are. Um, David is now a Sony artisan. I don't think so. Jean. Um, Axman said, hi, Kerry. Langston also said, hi, Kerry. And Jeff said, hi, David from Pennsylvania. Cheers. Um, Langston said, state dependent mechanics. I'm not sure what that means. Um, Raymond said, uh, hi, Dave. That was a great roast. Yeah, no, he, he, he slammed me. <laughs> I did laugh, though. It was funny. Uh, okay, uh, he warned me. He warned me um, a week before, and he said, David, I was talking to him, and he said, David, you're going to get slammed. <laughs> so I did. Uh, I think he stirred me for doing um, small rig stuff and everything else. It was quite funny. Um uh, was it, I do better when I'm drunk, Langston said. Casey burned a few bridges. Ha ha. I know I loved it. It was funny. Uh, good on him. All right. So let's have a look at what's in this box. Because I, like I said, I haven't looked. So the funny thing was when it came in this Pelican case, I thought, ooh. <laughs> What have I been sent? I was so excited because I am getting sent a couple of things. I'm getting sent a, um, this is why Casey slammed me. I'm getting a slider um, and also a slipod sent to me um, in the coming days. So I think early next week. So I'm looking forward to getting those. But let's have a look. So they sent me this Pelican case. But when I got the case, I thought, ooh, what have I got in here? I thought this is exciting. I've been sent a nice case as well. So let me open it. Oh, I'm going to have to move this chair. <clears throat> I'll put it down because they're, they're probably, <laughs> I'll have a sneak. <laughs> Just in case if it's not the Sony lens, hang on. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm going off here. This is found. I'm so excited. I can't wait to try this thing. Yeah, well, it is the Sony case. All right, let me put it down because there's only a couple of things in here which doesn't matter because there's charges and stuff. Um, and things, but it's just the camera and the lens. So let me put it down and I'll grab them both out. Is Casey hiding in the case? Yeah, I must do. I must slam him in a video, surely. All right, so here it is. Hmm. Uh, hopefully, there's batteries in there. Is there? Yep, the good battery. Is it charged? Yes. Oh, so it's brand new. It's probably brand new, unless they reset it for each time uh, it comes on, because it's coming up with the setup menu. Um, so I probably will have to go through that. Uh, as well. It might be brand because it actually does look brand new. So perhaps I'm the first person that's used this one. Not sure. Um, so what they've done, uh, uh, Sony Pro Support contacted me and they said, would you be interested in looking at a few different cameras? And you had to give an order of what you would like to look at first. Um, and so I put down um, the A1. I wanted to try that first. And they also, I put down as a second camera the A7R three. Uh, and also the a7r4 because I wanted to look at the new screens on those cameras because I'm dying to see the difference of how they compare uh, to what you've got with the previous cameras. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. I mean, that's one disappointing thing even with this one that you, they haven't got the new screen on it, but uh, I can't wait to use the rest of it. I'm sure it's superb. Um, and then you had to choose a series of lenses. I, I, and I, I did put this one down. It wasn't my first choice of 35 1.4. I think the first choice I had was the 50 1.2. Um, 
And then I also put down the 200 to 600, I think. Uh, and then I did this one and something else. I can't remember. There was a few uh, that I chose. But I'm glad to be trying this because I, I, I do love the 35 mil focal length. Um, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Let me just put it on. Have a look. And like I said, it's um, you're seeing this for the first time like I am as well. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to trying it. Uh, yeah, there, there is some focus breathing on this from what I've seen online, but I ha might have a look at that myself. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to organise a shoot um, probably, well, as long as we get out of lockdown. We're still in lockdown till Tuesday, so hopefully we're out of it by Tuesday. Uh, I've organised a shoot with a lovely girl. I'm going to do a dance video. Um, and I thought that I could do that because I wanted to try something where the A9 would be um, in its sort of prime, like sports, sort of dancing, things like that, where, you know, uh, she may be jumping around and things like that. And I can do a fusion video where I'm going to do um, stills and video. Uh, I might just do them completely different. I might do a, a stills vi a video or review and then a video review as well because I'd like to do a video of just a dance video for the girl as well. So I'll try some of the video features too. Uh, I'd like to try the 8K to see how that works and also to see if my M1 can handle it. Um, so let me just clear off a couple of these. Um, and then... Um, so I'll test it fully out. I've got this for two weeks, uh, a little over two weeks, I think two and a half weeks. So they, they've given me a decent um, time to uh, actually use it. So I will give a full review of all about it uh, in the coming days as well. I'm just glad that, like I said, so, that Sony Pro Support um, sent this to me. Uh, yeah, there's got the dual cards in there. I wonder what they sent me there. Uh, it's the t Sony Tough card, so it's not the CF Ex Express, so it's just Sony Tough, I think. Uh, I've got CF Express. Oh, that's the that's. I oh, know they are. That that's the A card, so that is an A card. So they've sent me two different ones. There's an 80 gigabyte one there, and um, what's the other one? I think the other one was. <laughs> I can't get it in. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, the other one was just a Sony Tough card, so that's your standard SD, which is 128 gigs. So I might use my CF Express cards uh, in there because they're larger. I've got the big ones. Um, so I may use them in there because I want to test things out like 8K, uh, all those sort of things. So if you do have things that you would like me to um, test on this, uh, leave it in the comments. Don't leave it here, but leave it in the comments down below because, like I said, I'll try and do whatever people ask for and incorporate it in my review so that you can see uh, how it actually is. I'm really excited about trying this out because I love my A9 um, and I'm sure that I'm going to absolutely adore this. Uh, I still think that if I was buying another camera today, I would probably just get an A7S III. Uh, I'm really that's probably what I'm thinking at this stage is I might buy just another one of those and I'll have the two of them when I get some money. Um, but having said that, if I had the money, I would jump on one of these instantly. I mean, I would love to have one of these, but they're nearly $10,000 Australian. Um, so I think I looked just before, it was about 9000 odd dollars. So, you know, <laughs> there's no way with what's happening at the moment uh, with lockdowns and things like that, that I would, you know, sort of do that at the moment. But having said that, like I said, if I had the money, I would certainly um, probably sell my A9 and jump on one of these because I'm sure this is going to be incredible uh, to use. I'm not going to look at all the ports and things like that because I'll do that in the review uh, that I have uh, in the coming days. But um, it's going to have that gorgeous EVF. Yeah, it has. It's got the beautiful EVF and I can't wait to try that because I love the A7S III. Um, so, like I said, if you have uh, anything that you'd like me to test, <clears throat> put that in there and I'll make sure I try and incorporate that in the full review uh, that I do. Um, but like everything else, I will be reviewing this uh, like I would use it in real life. And that's probably the difference of how I operate rather than just giving a review of you know, sort of talking about the camera and everything, you'll see it used in real life. And I think that's that's probably what you guys like to see uh, from me anyway. So like I said, anything at all, leave it down below. Um, let me just see what people have got before we go into the new uh, story, <clears throat> into the new stories. Um, where are we? 
Everyone was saying hi. Uh, Jeff said hi from Pennsylvania. Langston said, I better move this. I don't want to put coffee over the camera. Um, Rami said, hi, David. We're great roast. Yeah, I know it was funny. You've got to take Casey's um, roast. I mean, they, they are really good. And he told me, like he warned me he was going to give it to me, and he did. <laughs> I was watching it with Kerry. She was watching TV, and I was on my phone watching it with earphones in, and she couldn't work out why I was laughing so much. Um, uh, what else have we got? Laugh out loud. Casey burned a few bridges. Yep. Um, hello from Lilydale. I have the Zeiss 35 1.4. Should I get the 35 GM and let go of the Zeiss? Well, it, it will be a much better lens. Yes, I had the Zeiss 35 1.4, and it was. I had. I think I had a good version because a lot of people did talk about uh, that. Some of them were disappointed with that lens, but I was very happy with the 35 Zeiss that I got. I ended up selling it because I got the 24 GM which I love now. It's funny because the 35 used to be my fav favourite focal length and now I love the 24. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to shoot now with this, just to compare it again, that, that different focal length. Um, but yes, if you've got the money, um, yeah, I would, because it's, it's going to be a much better lens. Um, what else? Let me come down here. I wouldn't know about half of small rig stuff. If if it wasn't for you, laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah, I've got a few, and I've still got that follow focus that I've got to do from theirs, actually. Um, Roberto said, Casey sent me. Oh, thank you so much for joining us then, Roberto. Um, at, uh, at least you have a sense of humour about it. I don't think Tony North have ever recovered from the toner. <laughs> oh, I love it when guys give it to me. It's funny. But Australians have very good senses, sense of humour, though. We do it to each other all the time. Uh, we bag one another. Mates particularly have this thing about bagging one another, and it's just something that we do every day. So I'm totally used to it, and I love it. Um, hi, David. I have a question for you. Why do you like to use Profoto lights? Well, I've because I came from originally high-end fashion and things like that, I always um, started with using high-end gear, um, and that's the thing that I, I did. So I... I, I Look, there's a couple of reasons. Light is light, and and you have to understand that if you looked at the difference, say between uh, Profoto and Godox, you're probably going to find that there's you probably wouldn't be able to pick the difference. The thing for me is that I love the how robust they are. I love how the fact that they never ever miss fire. I mean, I don't think honestly, I think I I can't even remember I've ever having them miss fire with the Profoto stuff. Um, there's things like that that, you know, it makes it very easy. If I need to get it fixed, I can just go to the local store in Melbourne and then they'll fix it straight away. I don't have to send it off like it's got local support, things like that. If you if you want to go anywhere and hire um, any gear if, and things like that, Profoto are always supported for hiring gear. And because I came from more of that high-end uh, area initially, uh I know, and people sometimes hate saying this, but there is a thing that when you go and do some high-end work and it's high-end paid type work, uh, if you look the part, it does help. And I know that's stupid, but it is a case of the fact that when you bring in high-end gear, like I'm often walking around Melbourne and I'm shooting and then people will often comment saying, oh, he's using Profoto. So people do notice. And that's another thing. But, but look, to be completely honest with you, light is light. And I think... I've spent an awful lot of money over the years on Profoto. I think now if I was starting up, I probably would just go down the Godox line or something like that because uh, it's so much cheaper um, and the results basically are, are just as good. But what I love about Profoto is they're built to last. They're built like tanks. I've dropped mine so many times and they still work. Um, the innovation is amazing, and also the light modifiers that they have are outstanding. I, I have so many light modifiers from them, uh, and I just love the way that they quickly connect. You know, like I hate that Bowens mount. I just hate it. If, if you've seen the way the Profoto just sort of pushes on, it's it's wonderful. So there's reasons like that uh, that I adore. It's more for the consistency. It's more for keeping up with what I want to do without misfiring and things like that that I love Profoto so much. But you certainly have to pay for it. That, that You know, that's the thing. So I hope that answered your question. Um, Tony was such a good uh, opportunity uh, to lean into a joke. Yeah, I know he should have played off that for sure. <laughs> What's the power draw, Roberto? Uh, is Casey hiding in the case? Who knows? Um, he pops in sometimes. 400% uh, lighter than the Pelican. That's my takeaway so far. 
Um, Tony should have totally gone with the Tony. He should have. He should have gone away with that. That's for sure. I agree. Uh, he should have um, played along with that. I certainly would have because I love that word. It's a classic. Um, hi, David. Richard saying, uh, what firmware is it? Yeah, I might have to update the firmware, actually. Uh, into, let me just check. I'll have to change the date. Let me check. Um, date and time. Okay. Day, month, year. Okay. And what are we on? It's the 24th, isn't it? Um, 24th of the 7th. Oh, of the 7th. And it's 2021, and the time is, well, it is uh, 9.57. So 9, oh, 9, 57. I'll tell you, I did think that, actually, because there's just been an update that's come out, hasn't there, that's improved quite a few things. So if that update hasn't been done, I'll do it. 57, and OK. All right, so let me go to Menu, and let me go over here and go to um, version it's got uh version one so it's yeah it hasn't got the update i don't think i'll have to i'll have to update that before i um uh, do anything else to it i <laughs> hope you don't mind sony but yeah i would like to do that because it does affect the evf apparently there was um there was an update in how the EVF blacks out, and also there was some issues with stabilisation as well, which has been fixed. Uh, so to give Sony, um, you know, the, the best review I can do, I'd like to try and put the latest uh, firmware on there. Um, so I'll do that before I actually do the review and use it. So yes, version one. I'm not sure what the upgrade was, but I know there was an upgrade just came out the other day. Um, did you upgrade it, Greg? What was the latest firmware for the A1? Uh, I know it's it's more. It'll be more than one. Uh, Brett said I'm. Brett said I'm getting the A1 uh, and the A7S later, uh, and some new GM lenses soon. Lovely, Brett. Raymond said I'm actually liking my 51.2 more than my 135. Wow, Raymond, that's uh, a big call. I love the 135. Um, lockdown in Sydney forever seems like, yeah, I know. Uh, I've, I've, look, we had that last year, Raymond. <laughs> exactly what it's like. Hopefully we'll be out too. Uh, make sure it's version 1.1. Well, there you go. Yeah. So I'll have to update that, Michael. Yeah, I will. Uh, the A1 is supercharged, is a supercharged A9 and more. Yeah, I can't wait to give it a go. Long Rider gave me a donation too. Sorry, Long Rider. I missed that. Um, Super Chat just said... Uh, what is it? It's um, nothing. He's just given a super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, how's the grip feel? Nice. Well, it feels similar to what I have with my A7S III, actually. Um, yeah, so it feels very, very similar to that. Uh, I don't think it's much different. I'll have to compare it when I get the A7S III out and have a look. Uh, the rest of it... Um, Look, the one thing I love about the A1 series is the fact that you get, you know, the extra dial, which which I adore. And I wish all of the cameras had that on there because I always love that. And I miss it when I use the A7S III now. Um, the, but, yeah, it seems like this has definitely been upgraded from the A9 uh, series, the, the dials and stuff like that. Um, but, or the original A9, I'm not sure about the A9 II. I think the A9 II might be similar. The body has definitely been upgraded uh, the grip feels nice. Um, screen looks fine. Uh, I wish personally it was articulating, um, but I know a lot of you guys don't want that, so it just depends on what you want. But the body is definitely a, a nice improvement, uh, particularly, you know, the the latches are much better than what the um, original A9 and stuff had. Uh, these are way nicer. I hate the latches in the earlier uh, cameras like the A9. They're awful. Um, so yeah, they've definitely had upgrades. They're sort of incremental upgrades as they've gone on. They've just made it better and better, um, you know. And I think it's it looks terrific. Uh, just a pity they don't put the cutout anymore on the battery um, department down here or, or compartment because I do like that if you're using a dummy battery that you can close this. Uh, so that's quite handy. But I understand why they don't do it, but probably because of weather sealing. Um, so you know that's probably one reason why. 
uh, they do that. But yeah, it definitely feels nice. I mean, it's it's lovely in your hand. It's funny because when I first went to the A92, I didn't like the bigger battery grip. But now that I'm used to it with the A7S III, I, I actually like it now. So uh, it, it feels quite good. Uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, they've certainly improved over the years. The Sony bodies have got way better, um, way better. Uh, I got rid of my 35 Zeiss and got the 35 GM. Yep, I wouldn't uh, blame you for doing that at all. Uh, hi, Juicy, how are you? Raymond said, those pictures you took showing how to overcome sunlight were amazing. Uh, I was surprised you used the a7 III and not the a7S III. Um, yeah, I was doing some filming on the day, Raymond, that's why. So uh, I was using the a7S uh, for filming at that time. So I just grabbed out the a7 III. The a7 III is still an amazing camera. Uh, is there any giveaway? Yeah, you, I'm going to give away this A1. <laughs> uh, the battery on my Godox light uh, stick stopped working. They wanted me to send it back, and the shipping was half the cost of the uh, product, so I didn't bother. Yeah, that's the problem. I, and, and see, this is the issue with Godox. But having said that, you could probably buy three um, equivalent uh, products for Godox than you could with one Pro Photo. But, but like I said... Uh, I have another light that I used in, in there, which I can't remember what it was. It was a Godox clone type light, and I dropped it, uh, well, I, I I dropped it a little bit. So it was only a very small uh, amount. I was getting it out of the case, and it dropped on the floor, um, and it wouldn't work. The thing with the Pro Photo ones, I've dropped them off light stands. Like, I've dropped them off high light stands. Kerry's dropped them a number of times, and they just work. Like, they're just built like tanks. Uh, but you certainly pay for that, that's for sure. Um, don't update the firmware and you can test all the uh, conspiracies. <laughs> uh, interesting, Greg. Uh, yes, I have updated to 1.1. Uh, pretty hard to get either of the issues to occur, both now fixed anyway. Uh, it's a ripper. Makes me want to get out shooting just looking at it. Yeah, I know. It looks fantastic, Ro uh, Roberto. It really does. Weakest point is the rear LCD. And I was talking to Greg about this the other day. I really wish, and if Sony is listening... I really do wish that they would give, particularly for the, well, for any of the cameras, I would love them to give you the option to replace the uh, rear LCD. And I spoke to Greg about this the other day. I would willingly pay um, to have my screens on the A7S, the A9 and the A7 III replaced. I would pay for them to be replaced to the new screen. Um, because I think it's really important. And, you know, and I I often I will use the EVF, and the reason why I'll use the EVF, particularly when I'm outside, is because I can't see the rear screen. Uh, they're just not bright enough. And if you're doing critical focus and things like that, the resolution is just not there. And, and that's the problem with the older rear screens. Uh, and, you know, I, and I would particularly would love it if they gave people that had paid all the money for the A1 that option because, you know, you, I mean, that's the flagship. You've paid an awful lot of money for it. It'd be fantastic for Sony to say, uh, guys, if you would love, if you would like the rear screen um, and you're willing to pay for it, send it in and we'll replace it. And I think that would be a great thing for Sony to do. Whether they would do that, probably not. But I, I really do think that would be a terrific thing. Uh, if they could do that. Because if you look at the new screens compared to the old screens, and I haven't seen the new one yet, that's why I'm hoping Sony sends me one of those. But um, if you look at, say, uh, my A9 or, or whatever, even the A7S III, if you compare that to what the Canon, like the R5, uh, or even the Nikon cameras and things, um, even the Panasonic uh, GH5s and stuff, uh, their screens destroy the Sony screens. So the new ones would be way, way better. Um, so yeah, they just need to fix that. And I agree, Greg, it is the weakest point. Um, hi, David. Uh, he said, HVF Productions. Um, I like the tilt screen for photos better than the flippy, uh, except for video, flippy better. Yeah, it just depends on how you want to shoot. It really does. Um, G'day, Panda, how you going? Uh, oh, my Panda, I like this setup, David Osler. Uh, how you going, Panda? Uh, now, let's get stuck into the stories anyway, because I want to talk about some um, things. Now, like I said, I'm probably going to go back to using the iPad next week because it makes the uh, news stories a bit easier to read because um, I think they're a bit small, but we'll go through them anyway. So the first story um, is this. Now, what is that? Oh, okay, let me just quit that so that's not in it. Okay, uh, the first story is this one, which um, is talking about wild rumours for the A7 IV. 
And what it's saying here, um, it's saying a new video camera is going to be announced and a new macro GM. Um, let me just put this up because uh, Moving Matt just gave a donation. $5 for Moving Matt. Let's get all these super chats rolling so David won't have to review every little product. <laughs> Thanks, Moving Matt. That's another Casey thing, I know. But you know what? The thing is, I love them. That the, I'm a gearhead, and this is why I laugh when Casey said that, because I don't do that just for the sake of just doing a video. I love getting get technology. I you could ask Kerry, I am the biggest geek that the world probably has ever known. And I love to just get technology and I love to get something new because it, it's, it's interesting. I love looking at it. So even though I am reviewing it, yes, but I love the fact that I can have a look at all this new gear. Like I said, next week I'm getting a, a new slider uh, and a new um, SlidePod Pro. So, um, and I love stuff like that. So it's just, yeah, I, I just love playing with new technology. Uh, let me just click on this too. Just came back from a wedding. Agree, the screen still sucks. Even on the A7S III, I had it on sunny weather and still couldn't see well on S-Log3. And, and you know, that that's the problem. It's, they do, they suck. And that's why I use the EVF so heavily. And, and like I said, the EVF on the A7S III is to die for. Like, it really is that good. And, and I believe the A1 is just as good. So I can't wait to to use that. Probably when I use this, it's going to make me want to buy it. But like I said, I haven't got the money. Um, so uh, sunny weather will make the LCD screen look bad. The, the new screen isn't going to fix that. Yeah, but apparently it does because it's brighter. So it, it does make a difference. All right. So um, oh, and quickly before we keep going, Panda said, yes, uh, I also submit uh, that I'm a gear. <laughs> You're saying whore as well. I oh, know I'm the same Panda. I just love new gear. So let me get back to this while rumors uh, of the A7 IV because it's it's interesting. They're saying in here, you know, I'll have to make this largest next week so you guys can read it properly. Um, it says, I, about the rumors, I have no idea who sent them and 50, 90% uh, of the times they turn out to be wrong. But it happened in the past that a couple of these were right. So I will post them today and we will together or uh, and we will all together eventually keep track of this. Now it's saying source one said uh, that they just received or reviewers have just received the Sony A7 IV for testing in the field. Uh, release date is more than likely September, October, which is what I said. And he's also said in there that it's a 30 megapixel sensor is correct. And I, I do think that's True. I, I would expect it to be 30 or a fraction more. Uh, I think they're going to definitely up that spec uh, of that. Uh, and they're saying September, um, October. But the next source is saying he was, hi, I was told that the um, finalisation for the A74 got postponed again due to the current uh, chip prices. As a result, it's expected the A74 won't be released until 2021. Uh, well, it won't be re, uh, released in 2021. Um, they're saying basically that it will be 2022. Um, I think that's what they're, they're sort of saying because of the current chip shortage. Now, I do think that they'd probably want to keep the price down on that camera. Uh, they probably want to keep it similar to what it was before, or it's certainly not over 3,000. So I think they'd like to keep it below that three. Um, two five would probably be a really good point that they could bring this in and then just blow away all the competition. So that, that could be interesting as well, uh, what they could produce. But uh, I still think the longer we wait for the A7 IV, the more outstanding the camera is going to be. And there's reasons for that, like I've discussed before, because they will have sold an, enough A1s by then, they will have sold enough A7S III's by then, and A7R4s. Uh, they would have made money on all of those cameras. So really, I think the longer it takes, the more that that camera may sort of have features that the other cameras has in them. And the reason why I say that is because when the A7S, uh, when the A7 III was released, it basically blew the A7S II out of the water. And the A7S II was Sony's highest end video camera at that time. So I would not be surprised if the A7IV, the longer it waits, definitely if it doesn't get announced in September, October, and it's going to be next year, 
I think it's probably going to be a Mini A7S III and A9 all in one. Um, and I wouldn't even be surprised if that was the case now. If it's going to be announced in September and not released until sort of October, November, I wouldn't be surprised if that has a lot of the features. Look, I don't think it'll have 30 frames per second, but I wouldn't be surprised if it had 20. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it had 4K uh, 120. It may not have the real high bit depths. I don't think it'll have 8K, but it definitely will have um, 4K 60, probably 120. Um, and it may miss out on some of the bit depths. It'll have the same cards as what the A1 and the, A9 and the A7S and III has, the uh, CFast Express uh, cards that you can also put the SDs in. It'll have that. It'll have the new screen, obviously. It'll have the focusing, basically, of the A1. Uh, I mean, the A7S III focusing is incredible, so it's going to be interesting to see how the A1 compares to that, whether I'll notice much of a difference. So that's that's going to be interesting uh, as well. Um, it'll have the new menus, uh, the, obviously all the ergonomics that the A1 has as well. So it's going to be a really interesting camera to see what they offer with that at the price point, but I do think it's probably going to blow us away like the original A7 III had, uh, the A3 had. Um, the other rumor they're saying here too is that there's going to be a new Super, Super 35 um, 4K uh, sensor video camera that's going to come out. Uh, global shutter, built-in ND filter, uh, electronic um, dual lens um, turntable, I'm not sure what that means. Um, support IP live production and transmission, support SR live and HDR. Simultaneous 4K HDR and SDR production. So it's going to be sort of a high-end um, video camera that's going to come out as well. Uh, so probably not like the FX uh, series cameras. It's going to be more like your uh, typical video type cameras, but more of a high-ended uh, one as well. And Source 4, and this is interesting too, said that the new macro GM is going to come out. They're basically going to replace the 90 uh, mil um, 2.8 lens that's out at the moment. Um, and they're also saying, some say the 12 uh, to 24 GM lens, and um, that they're, they're basically not going to make a better version. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they changed the 90 mil. The 90 mil is incredibly good. It is a really good lens, very, very sharp. The thing that lets that lens down is the focus. Um, I know, look, you might say, well, it doesn't matter because you're shooting macro, you're probably going to be shooting manual focus anyway, but, but the 90mm is a great portrait lens if you wanted to use uh, for that. So if they, say, brought out a 90mm um, micro or macro lens uh, that was the as good and as sharp as what, it'll probably be better actually, but as good as what the 90mm uh, already is, but it had the linear motors that were inside it, um, probably better stabilization and things. It would be a fantastic lens, so I'm not surprised about that. I, I still think the next lenses that are gonna be coming out, the updated ones will be the 70 to 200 and the 2470. Uh, I still think they need to be updated uh, to the new linear focus motors as well and better glass. Uh, and the 85 1.4 definitely needs to be updated as well. It's a lovely lens, um, but it's slow focusing if you compare it to, say, uh, the other lenses that are out there with the linear mo uh, focus motors like the 135. Um, the 85 1.4, if they did the, an 85 1.2 um, with the linear photo focus motors, oh, if I had the money, I'd be all over that. So that's that story. Uh, keep putting away the questions there, guys. If you like, I'm going to come back uh, and later and, and go through them with you. Um, the next story is there's uh, the Tamron are going to release another 18 to 300 millimeter lens. Now, I will get this lens from Tamron uh, as soon as it's sort of uh, comes out. Um, I'll get a preview version of this lens. So I'm looking forward to getting that. It's another APS-C lens, um, 18 to 300. This would be incredible. Um, on you know your A6400, A6000. Uh, this is gonna have stabilization. I'm just looking, because it's so small on my 4K monitor. Um, it's going to be F3.5 to, what is it there, F22. It's gonna have uh, the linear AF motors, which are terrific. Um, magnification 1.2, so it's gonna have that macro look as well. Uh, and it's going to have image stabilization as well. So it looks like this is going to be a really nice lens. So you're going to have stabilization. Uh, it's going to have the linear focus motors and the typical build quality. If we have a look at the lens itself, 
Um, let me show you. It's, it just looks like the typical uh, Tamron lenses, which I've said it before has been very, very robust. Um, terrific. You've got the typical ceiling that Tamron has there as well. Uh, you know, and their range is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like we really are, like I've said before, we're blessed uh, now in the Sony uh, realm because we have so many um, decent lenses. It, it will be a variable aperture. It's a 3.5 to 6.3. Um, terrific. So that's that one. Uh, the next one, oh, this is it here, I think. 18 to 300. There's no price listed yet. Um they're not saying anything about that yet. Just say notify when, I'm, uh, when it's available. So it will be coming soon. Panda just donated some money. <laughs> what do you say there? Um, Super Chat, two ninety nine from the Panda Photographer. Someone donated to me sharing for paying it forward. Thanks, buddy. Um, really appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, anyway, that will be announced soon. Like I said, I'll get a version of that that I'll be able to show with you guys. Um, this one here is interesting because they're now saying that the ZV-E10 might be announced uh, next week. Um, so we're still waiting on that. Like I said, this is a, um, this camera basically is a mix between the A6000 series and the A uh, the ZV-1. Uh, and looks like it'll be really interesting for some people to use. It's probably not one that I'd get, but it looks like it will be a great little camera uh, for, you know, like just, just sort of carrying something around light that has interchangeable lenses. Uh, also has a fully articulating screen. So it looks like it's going to be a nice little camera for uh, Sony. They're, they're aiming this at, at vloggers. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Uh, I talked more about that uh, in last week's um, show. Uh, and if we're looking here, uh, I noticed Capture One released a new uh, version of Capture One yesterday. Um, uh, there's actually an incredible new feature, which is the Magic Brush, which uh, I've, I have upgraded now, and it, it works fantastic. Um, and it also gives you much better export features um, than the previous version. And it even has, you can see subfolders now uh, when you're going through and checking folders, whereas before you couldn't do that, it just showed all the images sort of in one. So it's, it's much, much better now uh, as well. Uh, just got another Super Chat too. Chris said, Super Chat 499 from Chris. Good, thanks, Chris. Thanks, buddy. Um, thanks so much. Um, so it looks like uh, Capture One now is just going ahead. And they've also put a note on the website to say they're going to bring out a iPad version of this uh, next year as well. Um, got another one. Um, Andy Moore Johnson said, Super Chat from Andy Moore. Thank you so much, Andy. Really appreciate that, guys. Um, and so that's great. Now, there's, like I said, I'll put these links down below so you can have a look at them uh, and uh, check them out to see what the upgrades are. The Magic Brush alone is is amazing. It really does work great. Now, I like the exporting features now. It just seems to work much, much better. Uh, for people that didn't know, I have um, changed from um, using Lightroom. I've gone to uh, Capture One. Uh, and I've really loved moving over. Uh, I really have. It's it's the the images definitely definitely. I should do a, a video review on it. But the images definitely look better when you process them from RAW in Capture One as against Lightroom. Um, it's beautiful. And I've found the importing alone, the images look beautiful basically as they are. Uh, I'm going to do a video review. I meant to do it last week, uh, but I just didn't have time. But I'm going to do a video review of the A7S III for stills. Um, so stay tuned for that because I'll do that in the coming week probably. Um, but yeah, it's great. So let's, now we, we're going to open up to Q&A. Um, so, oh, was there anything else? I think that was it. Yep, that's it. Um, so if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer, um, you know, we'll just stay until we sort of run out of uh, what people sort of want to know. Like I said, with the A1 um, and the, the, the 35 1.4, let me know if there's anything you'd like to test. Not in the live chat because it'll be gone, but uh, put them in the comment box down below after this is finished or if you're watching this later on. Let me know if there's anything that you'd like me to try um, because it'll give me some ideas that I can do for my review uh, in the coming days. I'm really excited about this. I'm so happy Sony Pro Support sent that uh, for me. Um, now I was down here, um, Panda said he likes the setup, um, thank you so much Panda, um, 
Please uh, invent a flippy screen and a tilt one all in one. I think the original A-series cameras had that though, didn't they? They, were, they had a really good tilt screen system. Um, I've never used them, but I do believe that it had a much better um, uh, screen. Um, let me go. Uh, no one has the money. Yeah, that's the problem, Panda. That's why I love it when they send them to me. <laughs> 30 is good enough. I agree. 30 megapixels, fantastic. I'm still happy. Like I said, I'm happy with the 12 from the A7S. Uh, 24 seems to be the sweet spot for what I've used, but 30, obviously, if you do do cropping, will give you that ability to crop in a little bit as well. Um, the A1 makes the A9 feel slow. Never thought I would say that. Well, that's going to be interesting, um, Michael. I can't wait to test that just to see how it uh, actually is and like I said I'm going to do a dance video and that's perfect for me because I do love particularly when the girls will do the running and jumping and you can get that perfect moment um, so and like I said I also want to test the video focus uh, and things like that for uh, dance um, the uh, silicon chip processing has also increased the price yeah and there's a real shortage uh, at the moment as well panda um, the CEO of Intel said today that the chip shortage could extend to 2023. Oh, let's hope not. Um, new macro GM, uh, is it the new macro? Yep. Yeah, it's gonna, that's going to be a new macro. Oh, have I got Maco, have I? Oh, <laughs> I did that last week too. Oh, I wonder if I can edit it while I'm here. Yep, let me go. I did that last week too. I put that many... Macro, save. <laughs> At least it's right on the thing now. Um, mm, 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 mm. Greg said, uh, the 12 to 24 GM lens is easily Sony's best video uh, lens. Uh, can't see any way it could be better. That seems to be a lame rumor. Um, yeah, I've never used that lens, though. It does look like a great lens, though, Greg. Uh, yeah, and I probably think you're right because I love the 24 uh, and have the ability to, you know, easily go to 12 mil if you're doing video too would be fantastic. It'd be great on a gimbal, uh, for instance. That's why I love the 24 so much. I love that sort of look of it. Uh, do you think uh, the 70 to 200 2.8 will be smaller? Yes, I do. Uh, I think they'll probably make it smaller and lighter. They, they tend now to have that ability to do that now compared to the older lenses. Um, so I definitely think it will be smaller and lighter. Yep. Uh, and like I said, I do think that those lenses need to be updated now. When you think Canon and Nikon are on the version 3 or 4 of you know their, their versions of the lenses uh, as well. Um, Panda gave me a super chat, so thank you so much. Uh, Roberto, yes, that Tamron does have a massive range. It'd be fantastic. And if you take the crop factor into it, it's fantastic. Um, Chris also gave the donation. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, IWC Pilot said, any rumours on any new Battis lenses? No, I haven't. I don't know what's happened in that regard. I still love my Battis 85 1.8. I use that all the time, particularly in weddings. Um, absolutely adore it. So it's weird that they've never brought out anything since that stage. Um, yeah, I don't, I, but I haven't heard of anything new. Um, I mean, the funny thing was it took me over 12 months to get my Battis. It was that hard to get the 85 because when I, when I came into the Sony gear, uh, there was no 85s available at that time, no native ones anyway, and the Battis was the first one uh, that came out. Uh, and so I was waiting for that for ages, and it's, it's amazing. And it's still uh, a great lens if you think it has stabilisation built in it. Um, super chat from Andy Moore. Thank you so much, Andy. Um, Chris said, I hope uh, you're right about the A7 IV. I'm sure it's going to be incredible. Um, do you like using noise apps like DxO? Yeah, yes, I do. But I've tended now to just use Topaz, Roberto. I'm using um, Topaz AI Sharpen. Uh, the latest versions that they've just put into there are incredible. They are so fast. But I also have um, uh, DxO as well. Um, I've got Photo Lab, and that has the uh, all the noise features built into that too. I think they're pretty similar uh, how they work, but because I'm just using Topaz, uh, Photoshop, and Lightroom, and those filters are built straight inside, and I'm using the Topaz AI, I think they're all pretty good to be honest. And really, now I think they're probably all as good as one another. I mean, I know uh, On One has a new AI version out as well that's meant to be really good too. But you know, I mean. How many of these can you sort of have? But yeah, I love Topaz. 
Um, nothing lasts forever. Or, or always on top of the tech world. Uh, oh, why did that change? I don't know. Just refreshed, I think. Um, where was I? Yeah, you're right though, Panda. Nothing does last forever. Uh, Panda says, I'll refresh my laptop with fresh install of Windows 10, but Microsoft was asking you to try their 11 and so-so. Uh, and that's, is that a paid update or is it um, just a, uh, a free one? The A1 is a bit... Uh, the A1 is a beast. It's really no joke. Yeah, I'm so excited about trying it out. Uh, the baddest you've never heard of a big comeback. Don't sleep on us. <laughs> um, Christian said, do you use Aperture Priority when you shoot weddings? No, always manual, uh, Christian. I always shoot everything manual. I like to be in control. Um, the easiest thing too is that uh, if you're doing it for video anyway, and now I've started using NDs for even stills because I like the fact of being able to use uh, a lower aperture and then have less power in the flashes. Um, so often what I'll do is I, I work out roughly what I want and then I can just use the ND to, to dial in the correct exposure. Um, and that works really well. Uh, so you just have to stay under the shutter speed. The, the thing I'm trying to do now is to not use high speed sync. I'm not really, look, it's interesting because the, the video I put up a, a few videos back shows how you can use high speed sync to overpower the sun. You can also do the same thing if you want to by using an ND. Uh, and that's what you can do too, because uh, the ND gives you the ability to uh, not go into high speed sync, which then makes it so that you can have more power in the flash. Uh, the thing with high speed sync is um, you lose probably half of the flash power because it, it, instead of giving an initial flash, it strobes. It gives off a fairly long strobe to uh, go while your shutter is, is staying uh, open. So I tend to like to use now an ND. Now, yes, sometimes there is a little bit of a color cast, but it's so easy to fix if you do a white balance just by using a color checker passport. I haven't got it here, but if you use a color checker passport, do your white balance, everything's right anyway, or just correct it in your raw photos. Um, so I'm tending to go that way now. And what I've found is it saves flash power. The batteries on the flashes last longer. You get more output out of your flashes as well. And I just generally like that look. So it gives me the ability to open up, you know, the uh, shutter speed and still be able to overpower the sun. Um, but yeah. Um, so I don't use aperture priority though, no. Uh, I, Kerry does. My wife, um, she has hers always on aperture priority because she doesn't give a hoot about the settings. Um, she'll do that. I always like to go manual. Um, where were we? Um, hi, David. Uh, I'm in the market of video. Um, I'm not sure because the rest didn't come through. Uh, how are you, Juicy, anyway? Uh, they wanted me uh, to try it and it was free. And I said, no, because I don't know there might be issues. Yeah, sometimes you're better off to stay uh, in what you've got. I noticed, um, see, some of the things, like if you, if you upgrade your Mac operating system, you can get things that break, particularly things like my RAID drives had issues and I had to wait ages for them to give Big Sur drivers. So there's no way I'll be updating to uh, the next version of Mac OS until I know the drivers are available. Uh, even if, like I said, I've upgraded to the M1 Mac and a lot of the music plugins that I use still don't work. Um, so, you know, it can be a real issue. Um, and in fact, I just bought Film Convert. Uh, for Final Cut, uh, I bought that last night and I installed it and I've got an issue saying it's not compatible. Now on their website, they said Film Convert was compatible with M1 Max. So I've sent them a, a, a message off to say, why isn't it working? So there is always issues when you upgrade things, that's for sure. Um, can't risk it at this time. I want to get work and I need a machine with um, no software problems. Yep, yeah, I fully agree. Windows 11 will be a free upgrade. Um, what else have we got? It's a choice between Aperture 300D 2VS, um, Nanlite, Fro uh, is it 4s or 300? I haven't used those, Juicy. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. I know the Aperture lights are very, very good, but I haven't ever had an Aperture light, but I know the name brand is very, very good. Langston, if he's still in, might be able to chime in, Juicy, because I know Langston is, is really into the lights. Um, Zeki said, "Hey David, is it really pe uh, is it really people in England say um, nipple <laughs> not joystick? I don't know. I don't say nipple. I say joystick." Um, uh, Juicy said, "It's a difficult decision." Um, 
Roberto said, must uh, be her hard during a wedding, uh, brain working overtime. Very impressive. <laughs> yeah, it is. But once you get used to it, it's, it's not. Oh, Moving Mac gave another donation. Uh, would you recommend the Sony 70 to 200 F4 for the ISIS and extra reach or the Tamron 70 to 180 for the 2.8 size? Uh, Matt, I would get this Tamron, definitely. Uh, if you're talking about the 70 to 200 F4, I've got it. Um, I would get the Tamron easily over that and just sacrifice the 20 mil. Uh, it's a much, much sharper lens uh, and a much more modern lens. So yeah, I'd get that. You're also getting the 2.8 aperture instead of the F4 as well. So yep, I would definitely be getting um, that. Um, what else have we got? Don't forget your camera's got stabilization as well. Yes, it does work better if you have uh, stabilization in the lens, um, but uh, it, it you would be fine. Um, but I'll, I would get the Tamron 70 to 180. Um, Juzy said, uh, the Aperture 300D is a bit warmer compared to the Forza. Oh, okay. I'd probably tend to go for the more warmer light anyway. If that was my choice, I like a warmer look, uh, rather than a cool look. Uh, but that's me. Um, yes, I have film convert. It's awesome. And had it for years now. Yeah, I've heard it's so good, Panda. Um, I looked at a couple of reviews and I thought, wow, that looks like amazing software, but it just doesn't work. So I'm hoping it's an easy fix that they can do because they say it's compatible. Uh, what's the story behind the naked silver lady behind you listening to her more than you? I know, how cool is she? I know. Uh, I've just got it. I mean, I, I found it um, and it is gorgeous. I've got two in this. Do you want me to show you? Hang on, let me see. I'll see if I can get my phone to work on this and I'll show you the two that I've got in the studio because you're going to love them. Uh, let me go here. Where is it? I think it's this one. Now, I don't think I'm probably don't know if I've got audio, though. Uh, let me see if I can get this to connect. Um, 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 iPhone. Oh, yeah, it is. It's working. All right. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to have audio, but I'll show you in the studio. So hang on. I might have to yell so you can hear me. I'll turn this other mic on so you might be able to hear me from that. Testing one, two. All right. So these are the two. Look at how cool are these two characters that I've got here. Well, let me put my shoe back on. All right. So I'll show you. So this is my setup if you're looking at, this is the green screen that I'm going to be using for um, some shots, shoots coming through. So I'm not sure if the audio now is going to work when I move away, but I'll just sort of show you and then you can have a look. But check out these. This is Susie. Around my studio. You can see that. How cool is that? Let me come back to me. I know how cool. Oh, I'll switch it off. So how cool is uh, that? Yeah. So I. I Kerry just got it, my wife just got it for me. Um, and I loved it because she looks like a cyborg or something. And I think it's fantastic because uh, she's a full size, they're all full size actually, <laughs> they, they dwarf me, they, they make me look tiny because uh, they're really quite tall. But I just love it standing in my studio. She looks like a cyborg or something. So that's what the story is with that. Um, and I love the silver, uh, you know, the way the lights reflect off it and everything as well. Um, where were we? Uh, yes, I have film convert and it's awesome for years. Uh, Nanlite Ferrosa 60 is fantastic. Well, there you go. So Greg said that. So thanks, Greg. Um, what do you think of Canon getting dual recording firmware upgrade? It's great. And that is terrific. I'm so glad that Canon are looking after their users. Um, so I think it, it's fantastic that they're um, 
they're doing that. You know, and Sony tend to Sony have done some reasonable upgrades recently as well. Uh, but I know that see Fuji probably give the best upgrades, and also Panasonic. Uh, sometimes Panasonic make you pay though, and I really don't. I know people hate me saying that, but I don't even have a problem with that if it's worth it. Um, but, uh, you know, that it's great that Canon are looking after their users as well. Uh, Panda was saying, yes, definitely the Tamron. Um, Panda also said, come to New York City, um, throw away tons <laughs> like water. What's that mean? Um, ha, oh, wow, uh, cool, we get a tour. Um, Juicy's saying hi. Uh, yes, we can hear. Now the Chrome lady is the winner. I know, how cool is she, the Chrome one? I know, I love it. Um, cool. Hi, Susie. <laughs> Panda's saying hi, Susie. Not sure if they are cool or creepy. I know they do look a little bit like that, but what I love about it too is that I'm going to be able to use them for lighting tests and things like that. So when I'm reviewing gear and doing things like that, sometimes it's so hard to get a model in, particularly like if we're locked down, uh, and they're going to be great that I can still do it, like give realistic lighting and you're going to see how the light falls and stuff like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, very clever, uh, Sony sending the A1. Good way to get the upgrade happening. I think that's why Sony Pro Support do it too. They like to, um, Tim, to get people uh, that have the A9s and, and people like that to look at the um, uh, cameras and gear and then people may purchase it. So it's a good marketing move, that's for sure. Thanks for the tour. Uh, well, that was an experience. Um, Kev said, I have one too. I call her Abby Normal. Oh, uh, as well. Um, by the way, I used Film Convert on Adobe Premiere Pro. Yeah, I noticed they had uh, they had Premiere, they had um, Final Cut, and also um, uh, what is it? The Black Magic software. Anyway, they have that as well. Um, in New York City uh, and Soho, which is uh, Manhattan doorway, a bunch of mannequins. Oh, I've got a mannequins, a bunch of them. Oh, okay. Uh, you're saying it there. Um, in New York City, in the area called Soho, they ha they thought a bunch of mannequins away. They, oh, they threw a bunch away uh, and they don't want to use any more. Wow. Uh, photographers should grab them. Uh, do you think Sony will ever come out with a fixed 202? Well, I'd love them to do that because that is a beautiful focal length. Probably one day. If not, uh, I'm sure other manufacturers will do it as well. Um, so it will happen, you know, it will happen with one or the other. Um, Panda said, I saw 10 yesterday on Price Street. Wow. Um, photographers should just grab them because they, I think they'd be worth a reasonable amount. G'day, Mark. How are you? So, like I said, we're just about near the end of the show. Um, if you, like I said, leave comments down below if you wanted me to uh, test anything for this uh, with you or for you. Um, I've got it for, uh, like I said, around about two and a half weeks. Um, I'd love to know, you know, what you guys would like me to test as well. Uh, I have a mannequin too, but it uh, <laughs> takes ages to blow up. <laughs> Well, I talked about that last week when I was bringing it in. I was just, just carrying the legs in and a lady walked past with her family and kids and I thought, what on earth are they thinking? <laughs> oh, God. Well, that's funny. Uh, anyway, guys, that's about all we have for today. So uh, any questions, leave them down below. Please, if you can, give me a thumbs up. I am I'm unsponsored and it does make a big difference. Um, so please do that. Stay tuned for some videos in the coming days. Uh, I've got a few. Like I said, I want to do the A7S III. Uh, I want to do that video to show you how good it is for stills. Um, and then I've got some other gear coming during the week as well, which Casey will, will go crook at me about as well. Um, but apart from that, everyone... Um, I will see you all for the live next week.